everyone, welcome back to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. I'm here in Davidson, North Carolina with Rob Caldwell and we're going to be talking about the uh, Bearhawk coming up next. So again, we're here with Rob Caldwell, and uh, he's gonna tell us a little bit about what made him choose this design, and uh, what others maybe have looked at in the past. So, so what yeah. was uh, the the thinking behind getting this one, or what which planes did you look at? Well, I I'm I'm a big fan of tail draggers. I love flying tail draggers, and I kind of had a, a start with flying with tail draggers. So that was kind of my basis. I wanted something with a big engine. I wanted something that could carry, you know, four. You know, a lot of the tail draggers, are the Super Cubs and the Huskies are tandem seating. This is a four place. Okay. So it's got a huge payload, about a 1,200 pound payload in this thing. So you can put, you know, four 200 pound guys in there and still have a lot of- Real, real people. Real people and- Not 1970s, 160 pound <laughs> yeah, people. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so that was appealing because uh, you, you've always got these very small envelopes on weight with a lot of these, these smaller planes and, and I'm not knocking any of them, it just wasn't going to suit my purpose. I wanted something I could do some long cross countries in, um, and I, can, I primarily want to use this as a business traveler, believe it or not. So it's 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 going to be a, a tail dragger with some nice fit and finish to it that, that, that I think will be appealing and as well as being able to serve me for long purpose cross countries. So, so the mission for this airplane is more of, of mixed use of doing the cross countries? Yeah, and yeah I, I, wanted to run, I wanted to run the gamut from, uh, you know, Flying out of uh, Lake Norman Air Park and uh, hitting some grass strips around here one afternoon with the guys, or uh, if I wanted to fly out west to, to take uh, you know our family or something out west on a big long trip, or we've even talked about going to the Bahamas. You know, so uh, I wanted something with a big engine and, and some speed to it, uh, as well as the safety feature, which I consider the the, the short field capabilities of this airplane. Uh, something happens you can land in a short distance at a low speed yeah so you know the this thing will land at, at about 35 okay uh, and and so that means I can probably you know, when I'm up to you know trained up on it I can probably put this thing down in about 300 feet or less Wow yeah you know, that's impressive yeah take off on this thing is even probably better probably with the, it's gonna have the IO 540 so it'll be getting off the ground at about 150 200 feet so Excellent. Yeah. So this kit is a little bit uh, unique where it's available as uh, plans only, or you can get it as a kit or a couple different versions of it. So what do they offer? That, right. And why did you choose this for you personally? Yeah. So the, the design has been around, Bob Barrows designed this plane about 20 some years ago. Uh, and the design has been around for in the late 90s, early 90s, mid 90s, whatever. But, uh, and, and those were plans and you, know, you could buy the plans and scratch build the airplane. So probably about 10 years ago, uh, they started coming into a quick build version, which is what I have, which I didn't want to get into the scratch build because you know now you're, uh, with this kit, I get the fuselage and the wings and everything's pretty much, sure. it's all assembly now. So I don't yeah. have to worry about punching out ribs and all that stuff. You're, you're further along yeah. in the build. Yeah. yeah, I aggressively said I can do this in a year. And I'm, I'm, I'm still on the fence with that. Um, Maybe I can do it in a year, maybe a year and three or four months. So and that's a pretty aggressive. With my setup being that I'm working out of my garage and that I can do this uh, from home. And I'm not driving to the airport and it's not remote that I can come down here. I can get three, four, five hours a day into this thing and probably be, probably more than most people would be able to do that. Sure. Okay. So you ordered this as a quick build kit then. So how did this arrive? Okay. Yeah. So uh, it, it came... Um, basically in a trailer uh, it was palletized and the, it was a very well built uh, uh, steel angle type of a, a configuration where the wings were inside of that and then the fuselage sat on top of that wow. and everything yeah. else was bubble wrap so uh, yeah there was bubble wrap and foam around this place for a couple of days but, <laughs> but it, it was very well packaged and, and nothing was damaged when it was delivered and so great, it, great. it was a very personal experience too because the driver helps you unload it helps you do a little bit of the unpacking so so right away a great experience from, from yeah the kit yeah I bought the kit from the uh, Bearhawk dealer in Canada and his name's Mike Silvernagel uh, Bearhawk Canada is his website uh, Just and because I, he had one readily on stock well or? no because I went uh, 
he invited me to Canada, Saskatchewan, to come visit him, uh, and I got to fly in, in, in a four place that he owned, which was a scratch built. Uh, he didn't scratch build it, but it was a scratch built that he had available. And he and I spent two or three days just flying uh, in the prairies of Saskatchewan, and, okay. and just I fell in love with it right away. And then he's also building a patrol himself right now. So there's three versions of the Bearhawk. You got the the Bearhawk four place, okay. which is what I have. And the next one coming down is the Bearhawk Patrol, which is a tandem built uh, configuration, which is similar to the Husky or the Super Cub. Sure, sure. And then they've got an LSA version too. So they're all high wing tail draggers. This is proof that you can build an airplane anywhere. This is a very deep, very deep two car garage. We'll go over that in a minute. You can build a plane anywhere. You just have to have the passion and desire to do it. So, I see something a little bit unique here. So just a quick aside, uh, Rob's going to show us how he built a rotisserie to be able to easily work on this plane. to build that it's obviously a very handy tool to have on you know flipping a fuselage and about what it costs to build yeah so like almost everything we do in these days I got it from a YouTube channel okay <laughs> uh, and I bought the uh, stands those are engine stands from Harbor Freight they were about 50 bucks a piece and then I had some steel that I had laying around so I got just over well I bought U joints so that it would flex and I wouldn't have any issues with the torquing on the frame. Okay. And they were, they were like $15 on eBay. So less than $130, I think. So Nice, yep. very, very useful. Yeah, I built the rotisserie first, so that was a gamble. I didn't know how well that was gonna work. And fortunately, it, it fit perfectly. We rolled it around the first time and I never had to adjust it. So I was just, I hit that one perfect. Um, then I just started going through and you know, things like the control assemblies, uh, the, the, the stick control assemblies, uh, the rudder pedals, uh, stringers, uh, and then, uh, you know, just piece by piece, I started going through, um, you know, I was really intrigued about the fabric covering process. So I, I kind of set myself up and started covering the control surfaces, the horizontal stabilizer, the elevator, the, the rudder, and that was a good learning experience. I really enjoyed it. I wanted to make sure it was something I could do and that I enjoyed doing that, and I did. I, and I, and I, I find myself really liking the fabric covering process. Okay, again, so immediately you want to get right into building this, so you came in here and started covering. Yeah. And what was the, uh, there's several different processes on the market available. What did you choose to, to cover and paint? Well, because of the confined space that I'm in, it was really uh, important to me to find something that was going to be safe. And, and, and most of the uh, fabric covering systems that I came encountered with were a solvent based type of system which sure. had fumes and that was going to be a challenge I didn't want to be yeah, that. see we're actually in your house <laughs> yeah this is a bedroom that I converted into <laughs> uh, again proof everyone you can build an airplane anywhere right so I chose to go with the Stewart systems because it's a water based sort of system uh, their glue I mean this is just I can thin it with water I can wash it off my hands it doesn't and it's easy to work with so um, Fabric covering was not something I had ever done before, so I had to learn, and they've got great videos on YouTube that show you how to do this, and uh, that was really what pushed me into Stuart because their, their instructional videos were so good and uh, laid out, and it just made it a lot easier. Very nice. So what, uh, this is your work table over here to create <laughs> yeah. and mix and yeah. whatever. There's a lot of the tools you get. These are pinking shears. Um, I've decided that I like the straight pinking shears over the, this wheel type of thing. Um, these are the tapes you're going to use for your joints and you're going to cover sharp edges with these sort of uh, uh, fibrous tapes. They give you some cleaning solutions to clean the fabric after you've uh, uh, put it on. Now what I did was after the fabric went on, the fabric looks like this. Then once it's stretched out, you use an iron to heat it and that tightens it down. And then this is this gray is actually a filler. It fills the voids of the fabric. And it also serves as a primer and a UV blocker as well. So it, this system doesn't have the silver that a lot of fabric covering systems use. Um, if you use this filler, you're, you're protected with the UV there. Okay, yeah, it looks really good. I mean, 
especially being first time. I mean, I wouldn't know the difference. I've seen advertised through Stuart Systems that they have several events where they have little training seminars. Have you attended any of those or this is all off of YouTube? They offered uh, that to me when I bought the, the system from them. They said they were having a, a training class, I forget where it was, and asked me if I wanted to go, but I didn't have the time to do it. Um, they also do training classes in Oshkosh and then Summit Fund. So if you, you know, I went through the one in Oshkosh and uh, a lot of the things that they did on the videos were still being done. So, uh, but the training videos were just tremendously helpful, more, th more, more than anything else, I think. Excellent. Good to know. Yeah. So yeah, Rob, if you could tell me um, how you set up your shop here to get yourself ready and prepared to start building this airplane, what other unique tools maybe you had to buy or... Right. This tool here has actually been the one tool I use more than anything else. Okay. Um, this is a, a portable bandsaw with a stand from Swag Off-Road. <laughs> uh, bought this for... That's pretty unique. Harbor Freight, yeah. I use this thing daily and it cuts everything for me. I've got a big upright bandsaw over here and a drill press, um, but that saw, that's, I use that saw quite a bit. The other tools I use, I've got a small air compressor and, and I, I have a... Um, a Pneumatic, uh, pneumatic rivet squeezer. Okay, that's handy uh, because using the hand rivet squeezer, that gets a little, a little bit on the forearms after a while. So this, and this is this is mainly on the wings, I assume. Yeah, but there's still things you know that I'm. Yeah, when I get to the wings, this will definitely be the tool that will save my, my arms. But uh, I do use that uh, for nut plates and things like that on the, on the fuselage, and it's been real helpful. Um, so this build uses a lot of uh, regular solid rivets than, than poppers or a mix of both in this? Yeah, there's a lot of squeeze, uh, um, aluminum squeeze solid rivets and there are some pop rivets, but usually the pop rivets are more on less structural things, things that you just want to keep held in place. Um, of course, and then I've got all these AN fittings that I... I well, you've I got had. this all very well organized over well, here on the wall. If you don't... You're just going to have bags laying around all over the place, and it's going to be difficult to find the then one. Then you're hunting through the bags. Yeah, and stuff, it took yeah. me a day to do this, but it's. I can't tell you when I come over here. Up, oh, I need a 414. Here it is, and I, and I got my washers and nuts and. So it's uh, it's good for a small investment to go ahead and organize yeah. it like that and get it yeah. going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're you're about six months into this project now. Just curious of what have been some of the. the things that have been truly enjoyable, and then maybe a couple of the things that have been a little bit challenging. In, in the process so far yeah um truly enjoyable fabric covering i just really that fit me i liked it and and i still enjoy doing it and look forward to doing more of it and a quick bit on that this particular design the fuselage is fabric cover but the wings are all metal correct the wings are all metal the control surfaces are fabric control the, surfaces are yeah, okay the flaps and the ailerons are also fabric covered okay so but the um Challenges, I guess, were I, I did some modifications. I, 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 I'm changing the, the fold-out door to a flip-up door, so I had to raise the threshold. Um, that was a little bit of a challenge. I had a challenge with the skylight. Um, the stringers, the two stringers in the middle were about an inch, inch and a half higher than the outside, so I wanted to flatten that, and I did, had to do some cutting and welding for that. Um, Fuel lines, you know, when you start working on fuel lines, you start realizing this is serious stuff because you got to get that right. That's just one of those things. I got to flare it right. I got to get my connections right. I got to get my bends, my cor my turns, and everything right on that so that uh, the fuel flows like it's supposed to, and, and make sure I don't get debris in the lines and sure. anything like that. So that that that's kind of a, it's not hard. It's just you want to make sure you got to be confident and make sure you do it right. Uh, brake lines. We're a little bit of a challenge, um, and I still don't know that I got that down yet. But I, it, that's my second iteration. It's a beautiful layout. I mean, it looks it looks nice. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, you know, the, the sheet metal. Sometimes I had to. The original plans call for the fabric to actually terminate here. Uh, I decided to bring my sheet metal out to this area here, or this station here, because I wanted to be able to pull these panels off if I ever needed to access the fuel lines. Sure. So uh, I've already heard about guys who've said they've needed to go into this area and they've had to actually cut the fabric to do it, and I didn't want to be that guy. So um, I brought sheet metal was a little bit of a challenge. I've never worked with sheet metal before, but you know, you get the right tools. Um, if you, again, it's all about having the right tool. You know, if you have the right tool, you're going to be able. To, one of the tools that helps out a lot on sheet metal is this tool. I don't know if you can see that or not. 
Okay. This is actually, it allows you to line up the holes. So you have a, like, let's say you have a nut plate that you've already established and you want to match that hole up with the nut plate. You put this little nipple into the nut plate and then the other part slides over top and now you've got your holes lined up. and sure, you just identifies it on the top side. Yeah. Yep. So uh, one of the things I think is interesting about what I'm doing here is, is that you're normally gonna, not going to see this airplane in this environment, meaning here I am in a condominium with a long tandem two-car garage and right above us is the Bravo airspace for, for Charlotte International. So, and a stole bush plane and, and in the city. And a stole bush plane yeah. to somebody. You know, this is where you're going to see a guy build an RV or something like that. So this plane would typically, you, you would see this plane typically being built from a, a guy up in Canada or something like that. But uh, my plane's a little different. I mean, it, I'll, I'll tell you that there's going to be guys that are going to say, gosh, you're making it too heavy. That's the first thing they always ask you when you tell them you own, you own a Bearhawk, what's the empty weight? Well, I'm, I'm, this will be a business traveler and it's going to have some nice fit and finishes to it. And uh, I've got an upgraded uh, instrument panel here, uh, fully IFR, WAS navigator and all that. And, and I have leather seats and I'm going to have some panels on my doors. And so these are things that are going to add a little bit of weight to the plane, but it's still not going to be anything excessive or, or crazy. Uh, it's this is not going to be I'm not be, going to be putting a moose in the back of here right. that I just shot. This is going to be more of a corporate bush plane. Yeah. Okay, so this doesn't have a, kind of a typical spring aluminum spring gear these these days. It has a, a fully welded gear using a oleo, did you say? Yeah, it's right? like an oleo. So this will go in here, and then this these two meet in the middle underneath here. So they're okay. spring loaded, and you, and you can actually fill this with an oil. Um, so it's the, the, this this landing gear is very forgiving. Okay. And that comes up just as an a weld as a weldment, just like you see it from the factory. Yeah, I had to add the uh, torque plates for the brake calipers and uh, running the brake lines for it here, um, and then this will be covered in fabric. Uh, I actually welded an extra step to the front uh, so that you can access the fuel tanks. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. So the tail. Um, the, the, the spring is actually a round rod, tapered rod spring that slides into this receiver here. Okay. And then the tail assembly, the, the, the forks and the wheel and everything bolt to that. I don't have that with me. I had to send it off and I'm getting a replacement for that. Um, but, I, but, but I do want to show you a suspension that I'm adding to this plane that's a little bit different. Awesome. All right, so this is the, the T3 tail wheel coilover suspension. It's got a dual uh, coils on it. These that been, is amazing work of engineering right there. It is. It's something else. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Yeah, these have been around. These have been around for a while. Uh, Super Cubs and 185s and some other types of planes have these. Um, there, there just hasn't been one for the Bearhawk yet. Most of them, uh, most of these springs are for a, a, a leaf spring type of suspension, and of course the, the round uh, spring rod that I just showed you is basically how this. This is the first one of the prototype that's been made for Bearhawk. This this tube will actually slide into this receiver. Okay. And then from there you mount your your leaf spring assembly tail wheel back here. Is that still a full swivel, or it'll go to a 180, or how does? Yeah, it's a full swivel with a detent. Okay. Um, it'll it'll detent in I think at 30 degrees okay. on either side. Yeah. Walking into your your shop here, one thing that was just impossible to miss was this brand new gleaming carbon fiber work of art sitting on your workbench here yeah. which you say you just took delivery uh i guess yesterday yeah correct and that's, that's right. from a company out west uh where is it located exactly uh billings montana aerotronics and a guy named jason smith was the guy i worked with on this uh met him at oshkosh uh, back in july and we've been talking about this panel for a long time um, this is the dynan skyview hdx this is a uh, Abidine IFD 540, which is a fully WASP capable GPS navigational system. So this plane will be fully legal for, for IFR, although I have no intentions of flying an IMC at all. Okay. I, I want to be IFR, so I'm in the system. That's basically my purpose for that. That is really nice. That's actually a full carbon fiber instrument panel, not just an overlay either. I believe so. We've got a two-axis autopilot that'll be on here, um, so we'll have pitch and roll. And then I've got all my lights. I have a 
I have a beacon. I've got two navs on the end with with the recognition lights there, strobe, taxi landing, and I even got I even got a uh, pulse or wigwag. Wigwag, yeah, that's always nice. That yeah, is truly a piece of artwork. Yeah, right and there. of course this is a this is an iPad. Uh, I've had many, which just pops in here, and you can just have your four flight up, and 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 you're going to get, you're going to have a lot of redundancy in this panel. I'll be able to navigate from this screen, from this screen, and from that screen. So, uh, and and of course, this feeds to the 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 Avidine feeds to the Dynon, and so I can take the iPad home with me, and I can plan my flight using an Avidine app. And when I get to the airport, I just put this in, and it Bluetooths my plan right into the navigator, and so. Uh, there's no time spent at the airport trying to program my navigator. Yeah, so Bearhawk has a Bearhawk forum, a builder's forum, and that's been really invaluable. Uh, guys get on there and share ideas and talk about the, you know their experiences with an aspect of their build that may be beneficial for somebody else, and uh, I can't say enough about that. Uh, Mike Silvernagel, who's the Bearhawk dealer up in Canada, uh, he and I have a very close relationship, and he's been great to work with. Uh, he, like I said, he's building a patrol right now. Um, it's about ready to fly, actually, and uh, he's just been great support for me. And, uh, and you got the, you know, the Avapro, which is the name of the, the the kit manufacturer. Mark Goldberg is the owner of, of Avapro. Uh, who, they're they're the ones that build the kits in Mexico, and Mark's been a great help too. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I actually have a local guy, um, Jared Yates, who's up in Hickory. He built his Bearhawk a few years ago, and he okay. comes down here and helps me out every once in a while too. So. Lots of good help, and the local EA chapters. That, that that those guys have been great too. Even though nobody's building a bear hawk, but they're all building something, and they, they sure. all like built, sharing their building experiences with everybody. Okay, today on this episode of Storage Wars. <laughs> okay. We won a set of wings. <laughs> this will go to auction. So yep. these these are a set of bear hawk wings. That's right. These are what's called the hairy riblet style wing, which succeeds the NACA 4112, which is what was on the A model bear hawk. But hairy riblet was known for the guy that said he could build a better wing than the NACA wing. Okay. And this is his version of that uh, upgrade and. Um, so the wing comes almost completed. The only thing left to do. It comes primed and everything as you see it, just, just right. how it is? That's just right, exactly. And of course, of course it only makes sense for somebody who's building a bush plane to have a Jeep as well. <laughs> that was the last project I had. <laughs> so this is what we'll end up running the wiring and plumbing and everything and then we'll just go ahead and rivet this stuff all back in. Nice. Yeah, a lot of work has been done. For sure. Yeah. You know, the range already with these two 25 gallon tanks is already around seven, eight hundred miles already. So I think I I think I'm alright with that. So you have your flap attachments here, which are more of like a fowler type flap? Yeah there's the flaps in the back. There's seven feet of flaps. So just to get an idea, how tall are you, Rob? 6'2". Six 6'2", two. Six two, and we're still going, still going. Massive flaps on the Bearhawk. Almost the quintessential barn door. Wow, literally, yes. And it's framed out very well. What's that, you know the, the degrees, the degrees of flaps? 40. 40 degrees, so. At five notches. Wow. That's impressive. And then these are the fuel tanks you're talking about, fully welded, sealed, tested. That's right. No messy putties to, to deal with. And I'm sorry, yeah. one more time, how many gallons of these each? 25. 25 gallons a side. Most of the guys, going back to that utilitarian sort of thing, are using sight gauges. Um, I'm not going to use sight gauges. I'm going to use the B light uh, sensor Sensing, probe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, you know, I purchased this kit through um, a fellow by the name of Mike Silvernagel up in Canada, and uh, Mike's website is BearhawkCanada.ca. Uh, he's a great guy to work with, and uh, it's been fun 
made a friend and everything out of him and so it's just been this is a phenomenal airplane it, it, it just exceeds everything I was looking for and I uh, can't wait to get it flying and, and uh, maybe do a patrol next that might be my next project sounds I fun yeah and I hope that you reach out to me when you're done maybe we can do oh, another yeah. video of actually seeing it flying that'd be cool yeah well thanks Thank appreciate you. it appreciate it, Brian thanks thank for you coming.